Hey everyone, this is Kevin from ControllerWorks and this is an overview of how to uh, install Kale Chocolate Low Profile Switches in your, in your keyboard, your custom mechanical keyboard. And we're going to be working today with the uh, Mini 42. This is a low profile mechanical keyboard. comes in two halves and uh, we're going to be installing these showing you how to do these uh, kale low profile chocolate switches and so this is what you're going to need so you need your your keyboard itself is a split keyboard and these are connected with a TRRS cable you're going to need the switches you're going to be installing uh, this is a there's a switch puller that can be handy Tweezers are nice to have, and then this is a um, more of a keycap puller, wire keycap puller. All right, so this is how you. Oh, and um, USB cable for wired keyboards. This is what you do. I'm going to start out by connecting the TRS cable. TRS means a tip ring ring. Uh, Tip ring ring S, I forget what S stands for. But it has four 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 terminals there. One, two, three, four. So we're gonna insert it in here. We're gonna do this first. And you should hear a little nice little registration click. We're gonna do the same on the other side. Alright, so there's our there's our cable connecting the two halves, and in this case we're going to connect our USB-C and we should see the keyboard light up. Okay, there we go. So the keyboard itself looks like it's working fine. Here's what you need to know about the switches. Um, so all of these that uh, are compatible with these keyboards, they're all made by Kale. And they're called chocolate because um, it's flat and it has a square shape to it, so it kind of looks like a chocolate bar. And I have two varieties here. One is a, this crystal red would be considered a three pin, and uh, most of them are, are five pin. And what the difference between the three pin and the and the five pin is uh, the five pin has these side um, registration pins. So there's two electrically active pins on the bottom and the side. There's a center registration pin, and then there's two side registration pins. The three pin only has the center and the two electrical connections so the um it doesn't really matter if you have a mounting plate if you if you um do not have a mounting plate then the the other registration pins help to keep it keep it centered and aligned um so what you do you should first or First thing actually you want to do is you want to inspect the switch. And the thing that always happens with these, the, the, uh, the metal pins tend to get bent. And so what you do is you just visually look at it. And uh, if they seem a little bent, you can just go in with tweezers or some pliers and make sure that it's straight. So not bent and straight with the metal pin. So that's the first thing you do. The second thing that you do is you you orient the switch. Um, there is a little window on the top. That's where the LED is designed to, to shine through. So you can see that little window on the top. The other way to know the orientation is the stem will form a, a T-shape. 
some of them, they have so-called south-facing LEDs, so it gets flipped, but uh, in a regular orientation, it's going to make a, a T-shape. So what you're going to do also, oh, on the software side, uh, this keyboard has a VIA firmware loaded into it, so you can go to uh, useVIA.app and you want to authorize the keyboard, so I'm going to click Authorize New. I've paired one. I have another keyboard running right now, but this one is unpaired, so I select Connect. It's connecting to the keyboard, and then I'm going to click on Keyboard Tester. And this is a standard layout, but we want, we have kind of a custom layout here, so we're going to click this, and then it's going to rearrange it into the shape that we want. And uh, so we have our switch in the right orientation. And now let's look at the let's look at the socket. It's kind of a similar thing that you have the five pins and then the LED at the top. And what you want to do is just gently, carefully try to line up those um, the electrical pins into the little uh, hot swap sockets and just try to feel that the switch itself is lined up in the um, in the mounting plate. So this external raised part is the mounting plate. And then when you feel that everything is raised up, what I, what I like to even do is um, if you press the switch while it's pushed almost, not fully installed, but a little bit, then you can trigger it. And this is actually how we, how we test. Uh, we don't push the switches in all the way. If you don't order switches, uh, if you do order switches, then we install them unless you say otherwise. So this is lined up. We know that both uh, terminals are lined up with the hot swap sockets, and then we're just going to gently push it in. Now black, the black case, that anodizing, it's a tight fit. But there we go. We've pushed it all the way in. We're kind of pressing the back. Um, some vendors, so the, the issue is that the, the hot swap sockets are just soldered to the back of the main board. And what can happen, since it's only held on by solder, is when you push in the switch, it can it can push the, the socket out. And um, in our case, the, the sockets are very, very, very close to um, this back plate and this is a aluminum it's an aluminum case and we really don't recommend that you unscrew these but some vendors what they say is they to take off the back plate and then hold on the back side of the of the hot swap socket so they don't get pushed out so it's a risk it's it's a risk um, the other thing to know is that the chocolate hot swap sockets are only rated for 100 insertions so this is not something that you want to do every day. So you don't want to say, oh, you know, I want to, you know, on the weekends I like um, chocolate switches and then on weekdays I like red switches and then you're switching it all the time. That's that's not something you want to do. Um, you want to decide and try it out with a key tester. And then when you've really made up your mind, uh, then just put in your keyboard. And if you really decide you don't like it, then... Um, then you can swap it later. But don't just go, if you're a, like a YouTube reviewer and you're swapping it out every day because you're trying something new, you're gonna wear out those, um, the hot swap sockets. The the Cherry hot swap sockets, they make versions that are rated to a thousand uh, insertions, but these these ones will, the, those terminals get worn out. So that's what you wanna do. Now, um, Same thing, so you just, um, you know, you just go in an orderly way, inspect the, inspect the pins, get it lined up. Try it out. Is it lined up? Yeah, it's lined up. And then push it in. There we go. And with a nice metal mounting plate like this, um, it's going to click in. There's registration uh, notches in the in the switch, 
and it's just gonna it's gonna fit in perfectly if you have a PCB I mean if you have a acrylic mounting plate it's gonna be thick so it's not gonna click in just right but this is this is the exactly the right thickness to click in uh, properly now here's the keycaps you don't have to worry much about the keycaps um, on most of these if you have shine through legends then um, the legends are going to be at the top you can see it glowing through there and there's two pins on here there's two little tabs and you're just going to line that up and then push it on however you like and you're going to need to press pretty firmly um, now I find personally that the the um, the keycaps are going to stick in the switches harder than the switches are going to stick into the, the keyboard. So what that means is if, they, if you can get your hand on the on the keycap and you pull, you're going to pull the the keycap and the um, and the switch out, and that's just kind of the way it is. Um, if you really need to get your hands between keys, you can use the the uh, keycap puller. Um, this switch puller, if you can't get in there with your fingernails or something, you can try to reach around here. Now the, the problem is this is this is metal and you have a risk of of uh, scratching the case. So you have to be real careful and just kind of rock it, rock it back and forth. not easy I'm just gonna pull this out and again the risk is up ah, that that pulled out the um, the keycap so there we go I pulled out the, the switch I have a tendency to, to bend the pins as they come out. The other thing you, that can happen is you can pull the housing of the switch apart. So there we go. We pulled the, the switch out and just make sure we didn't scratch anything. Now everything's okay. And there you go. You just keep working your way across. Look at the um, the switch test, the key tester um, display on VIA and just work your way across and enjoy your keyboard. And if you're unsure about um, what kind of switches you're interested in, we have we have sample packs you can you can try out. Thanks a lot. See you next time.